Hello again. This video is going to cover a few things. I'm going to cover tips that will hit some of the highlights of the past 150 videos. Uh, some important things to know, particularly if you're new. I'm also going to do a medical update uh, towards the end, or the last segment of this video, depending on how I end up editing it. And I want to do a thank you again to all the patrons, all the Patreon account people. I thank you so much. It's, it's been huge for me. It may not seem like much, but it, it's been huge for me. And thank you so much for that. So let's get on to the tips. You're going to do a lot of bus riding. Now, in the U.S., I never rode buses. I think when I was in the Marine Corps, they stuck me on a bus once for infantry training or something, but I vaguely remember it. Here, you're going to ride buses all the time. If you're doing any kind of distance traveling, uh, from Cuenca to Aloha or, or more, always try to get towards the front of the bus. You don't want to ride in the rear of the bus. Many of these buses have bad suspension. And when you get in the back of that bus, everything is pronounced. You'll be bouncing all over the place. You'll be like one of those bobblehead dolls. You're going to get seasick on land. It's, it's uncomfortable. Try to get in the first third of the bus. The closer you can get to the front, the more comfortable your ride is going to be. Now, running around the city doesn't make any difference. They're all uncomfortable. <laughs> Another important tip, always carry change for the taxis. Don't hand the taxi a big bill because miraculously they never seem to have change. You're going to run into a lot of them, particularly if they're new. They can tell that you're new and you could see a bucket of change in his console and he'll still tell you he doesn't have change because yeah, he just figures you'll forget about it and just give him the money. I carry a lot of one dollar coins and a couple fifty cent coins in my pocket. When you're traveling the bus, again, not local, but if you're going city to city, always carry some change, a few dimes, a few quarters. Why is that, you ask? Okay, first of all, if you need to use the toilet at the bus stops, they're going to charge you 10 cents, sometimes up to 25 cents. And as embarrassing as it may be, they ask you if you have to pee or if you have to poo, because one's going to cost more than the other. Yeah. But that's the way it is. Uh, even if you carry your own toilet paper, which I highly recommend because they might give you like one little tiny tissue for, for your 10 cents. You know, carry your own toilet paper. If, if you have to blow your nose or something, I mean, that's, that's what you need to do. So throw a little in your backpack. But carry change. Also, when you leave some of the bus terminals, the one in Cuenca for sure, the one in Cuenca has um, a vending machine. You put in a dime and it spits out a little paper ticket. And then there's a guy that's sitting there and you have to give it to him if you want to exit out into the bus. Others, they'll incorporate it in the price of that ticket. And that makes it a lot easier. Quito does that. But you want to have coins for those situations. So when you're riding a bus, Carry five or six dollars worth of coins and a dollar's worth of change. Shorts in the Andes. You don't really want to do it. Uh, it's, first of all, the weather changes quite a bit. And what's hot at noon might be kind of chilly at five. And the other thing is, and eh, you don't have to care about this, but you stand out like a sore thumb and people kind of Oh, there goes the, the new gringos and you know, it's like we shouldn't worry about those things and frankly I don't But they're not practical and that's why people don't really wear shirts 
I suggest that you carry an umbrella and a jacket. Now, you, you might want to assemble like a day backpack. They'll have some bottled water, uh, some toilet paper, uh, an extra shirt, maybe a jacket, a, a light jacket, rainproof, um, stick an umbrella in there. You know, just a small thing that you can carry. I don't, but if it looks like it's going to rain, if I suspect it's going to rain, I'll take an umbrella. You don't want to stand out for five, six, seven, eight minutes in pouring rain trying to get yourself a taxi. You stand under an umbrella, it's not a big deal. Watch where you walk. Well, Cuenca has made a lot of progress in new sidewalks and roadways. There are still a lot of areas where it's a minefield. There's potholes that come up out of nowhere. You can really hurt yourself. When you're new here, your first month, I highly, highly recommend you find yourself a local guide. I don't necessarily mean one of these people that are going to get you visas and that sort of function. I have different feelings about that. But a local guide, I call them a cultural guide, it saved me so much time and so much money that it actually didn't cost me anything. When I look back and I figured out what I would have spent if I did this or that, um, Maria, who is the one that helped me, introduced by a friend, she taught me so many things about taxis and buses and finding rentals and uh, dealing with utility offices and all the things that you have to contend with to live here. She taught me so much about it that I know, having gone through it, what I would have done and, and the, how problematic those would have been. How much money she has saved me in not having lost deposits, not having uh, maintenance problems with landlords, uh, not paying too much for rent. All of those things she taught me. And that has saved me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And because of that, I highly recommend to you that you find yourself a cultural guide for the first, maybe first month. And during that time, they can, you know, take you to the ruins and museums, explain the culture, the history, how to behave, how to talk, maybe a little Spanish. I definitely recommend it. Okay, this may be a pet gripe of mine, but I am so sick of this, I hate this. You have to really, really be careful of bone fragments in meat. I haven't got it in a restaurant, but when you buy it, and I don't just mean at the Mercado, where you see them with the cleaver and it's obvious, but Super Maxi, for example, you cook everything, you look it over, you cook everything, you bite into it, and there's a big piece of bone fragment. This has been covered, I think, even if you haven't been here, you know this, but choose your fruits and vegetables carefully. Your cultural guide can help with this when you first get here. Learn who the good vendors are and who to avoid. They definitely know. A local person knows that. Also, you want to wash them. Uh, you don't want to have amoeba problems. Everyone talks about the El Merzos, the lunch is only $2, $2.50, $3, $3.50, and that's true. And they're everywhere. You can't walk down a city block without hitting a couple. You know you could.